four entitled If the Hat Fits. And now they are back in New York, New York. And we see Bobby and Divine, they get out of a limo or a limo cab. And Divine says, so what will we do? We tip them or something? And Bobby's like, no, 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 no. The label, you know, the label takes care of all that. And we see the energy of Bobby like... I'm my big brother here, but you know, I'm kind of, you know, doing my own thing. And he's proud, you know, as the younger brother, and he's walking and he's reciting lyrics from his song, you know, yeah, I'm with the lady, you know, he's he has this energy, and while he's doing all of that, Divine is like, mm-hmm. He looking all around and he has this energy, like, okay. <laughs> and they get into the studio, the beginning area of the studio. And Devon's like, hey, man, look, you know, your name's in lights. You know, you're about to do a video. You know, that's good. You made it, man. And Bobby says, no, we made it. All of this, this, this is us. And Divine goes from the energy of this show video shoot and kind of have it like ugh, energy to when he hears the word we, his body language shifts to a okay we because Bobby's letting it be known at that moment whatever you thinking that's going on I'm not too big to know this is us this is family it's not just about me and, Devon, and Devon's whole energy changes and and you can see that they had that moment of clarification that this is us. And you see Divine walk a little bit perkier and now he has his arm around him, you know, and they walking a little further. And as they're walking a little further, you know, we see Dre come up to Bobby and say, hey man, you know, this is the video shoot and they can't really get into all of the details of the video shoot just yet because they're being introduced to somebody. And he says, Bobby, I would like for you to meet and it's this gentleman, he has a actor ensemble mask on that's meant to be silly and and then we see you know the the ghostbuster you know cat that you know the top we know who that is and bobby says no 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 no, you don't need to introduce me i know who this is just you know this prince paul you know and they share a dab and he's like yeah you 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 produce stuff for de la soul man you know you did the whole album i'm really loving everything that you do and he says nah man de la soul is dead and bobby is just like Oh, I just thought he like, nah, man, that's the name of the next album. Bobby like, oh, <laughs> oh, because I was about to say. <laughs> Bobby starts to talk with Dre and is telling him, look, you know, for this album, I really want to produce my own stuff. You've heard my stuff. And Dre's just like, yeah, it's really good. You're a really good producer. And Bobby's just confused. Okay, if I'm a really good producer, you've heard my stuff. What's the problem? And Dre says, oh, that's unheard of you know a rapper producing his own stuff i mean we we get other producers to do stuff and by the way you know prince paul will produce your album it's like prince paul i mean i know he's good but i produce man i'm, I'm a producer myself and he's like name to me you know some artists that have produced their own rap albums and he's like tribe called quest uh de la soul he starts to name all these these people and he's like uh but that's those are groups you know, not not solo acts. And he's just always giving him an excuse about why he can't produce his own music. So for those of you that don't know, the underlying thing about in reality, why a lot of labels, especially back then, wanted to provide a producer or provide a songwriter even if you were a good producer even if you were a very good songwriter it's less and less that they'll owe to you <laughs> they want profit to do a full cycle of either people that they've contracted people that are associated with the label so at the end of the day when it's all said and done that money comes back to the label and the label's belly is fat instead of letting the artist write letting the artist produce because that would be more money going into the artist's pocket interesting as they're having that discussion Bobby finally gets to the full area of the set and it is this ragtime soft shoe-esque video shoot and he's like what is this 
I told you that I wanted something cinematic, but this is not cinematic. Like, what is this? What is going on? He's just like, well, I have the director going into more detail about what that is. And the director says, this is great. This is something that is back in the day and you're gonna look great. And there are girls and women that are in uh, evening gowns. And he's just like, what is this? This is not me. This is not even my style. Like, what are you doing? And you can tell that the communication between J uh, Dre and the record label went in one ear and out the other. Now, we can say that Dre spilled his guts to the record label and say, hey, this is what my artist wants, yada, yada, yada. But from the actions from Tommy Boy, they're not trying to hear it because they feel like they have enough experience. And regardless of what your artist is saying, we're trying to sell. So if we care less about what your artist thinks, wants, design, uh, clothing, any of that stuff. Our main focus and what we th is what we think uh, that it is best. And the director says, I've done this before. This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be back in the day. And we'll throw in a little bit of your street stuff too. You know, we're going to mix that in there. The tone and the undertones is just really rude and it comes off. It's just totally unconnected with hip hop and what it means and what he is trying to display as not only an artist, but somebody that the audience is trying to get to know. And the artist, he wants to be himself. So they take him to go speak with Monica. And Monica says, I've done this before. Um, we know what we're doing. People didn't believe in Tommy and I. We started off in a small office suite and look at us now. You have to give us trust that will take care of you and that this video is going to be fun. Look, it's meant to be fun. It's meant to be funny. It's meant to be back in the day uh, with old historical movies and kind of like a ragtime feel. feel. So here's the issue. When you look at the set, if you're totally disconnected with the history of Hollywood and black actors, you have no idea what's wrong with the set. You think, oh, it's back in the day. It's supposed to be fun and yada, 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 which is true. But when you don't have a cultural connection of who your client is into understanding why this is a racial undertone and it has racial undertones to it, you won't get it. The blackface era, white actors dressing up in blackface, performing this yowza, yowza, yowza in a suit, then you don't get it. So it's this racial undertone to him that this record label doesn't understand. So it's just a salt grain of the writers of this episode that are trying to show that he felt uncomfortable. They didn't get it. They, and if they do get it, and if they do know that it's racial undertones, they ignored it because they're trying to sell, 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 and they could care less about what this artist thinks. Bobby feels that he has no choice but to accept what's going on around him, and maybe he's just overthinking it, and maybe it is supposed to be fun, so let's just go for it. They get him over to wardrobe, and they show him the suit which he's going to wear, and it's a penguin suit. Going back to what I just said, the outfits that they used to wear in that time frame wearing blackface which were penguin suits sing sequin penguins penguin suits uh it, it, it gives off that vibe and, and they're like no 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 this is supposed to be elegant you know hollywood just try it on like just give it a whirl you're overthinking it and they take off his bandana they take off his jacket they take off his rugged look and he's starting to get into the suit and they're putting it on him and they're like see it's not that bad and he's like okay it's a, it's a suit uh, uh, all right and as he's putting that on he sees sha pull up and he's there and he's like, hey man, you know, you're at the video shoot. And he tells the assistant, hey, uh, 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 make sure my brother and these people over here don't see what's going on over here. Because it's quite evident that he doesn't want people to see what he has on just yet. And he wants to have a moment with Shy before anybody intervenes and maybe interrupts. So he talks with Shy and Shy's just like, hey man, you really, you really on a video shoot. You know, he's really looking at how this is all coming along, but then he sees what he has on, like, okay. And he's like, you know, I'm glad you're here. And as a matter of fact, I want you to be in a video. I want you to be, and not only do I want you to be in a video, it's gonna make me feel more comfortable because somebody is in the video that I know. So just relax, you know, make yourself comfortable. And as he's talking with him, 
we see Dennis walk up and he has a champagne bottle and he's looking all around. And he's like, you got, you got shy here? You know, all this stuff that we going. And you know, it's the, oh, here we go with Dennis again. And he's like, you got him here and y'all just, y'all fans and, 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 and y'all linking up and, and, and hugging and stuff. Like, you really thinking about that? And Bobby was like, listen to what you saying. We are on a video shoot and you were just turned up like this. Like, do you not see what's going on around you? Like, like chill out and you know Dennis is telling him now you might be doing this but I'm still back in the hood doing blank 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 and, and, and this and that while you got this suit on and doing all of that and you on the video shoot and Bobby says you stop rapping we've had those conversations where I tried to convince you to keep rapping and you stopped and in other words I wanted you to be on this grind with me and understand and take this journey with me. But because you were so consumed and you're thinking about yourself, don't get mad at me. In other words, don't, don't, don't put this on me. Dennis is not trying to hear it. And another thing that's mentioned in the writing for you to understand from that scene is that that hood code that can either be uplifting or it can bring you down. This sense of responsibility of taking care of everybody around you when you reach some epitome of success or improvement. When somebody else isn't doing well and you're doing well, it's this guilt of you got to have people on your back and you got to take them with you, even if they weren't involved in the process. And I, when that happened, that's all I was feeling and all I was hearing throughout that whole scene of not only didn't you make it, but you knew I had dreams too. Why didn't you take me with you? Type of thing that Dennis had going on. And that's pressure on a person. Yes, don't forget where you come from. Yes, follow your dreams and all that other stuff, but everybody got to do the work. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to, you know, and that, that's something that we got to also take note in the writing. And I'm sure that that was something that Bobby said, we have got to put that in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've got to put that in there because we don't know how hard that, that, that hit Bobby in the chest because he's not accomplished yet. He's still trying to see what the heck is going on with him developing as an artist. And now we have this sense of responsibility with everybody else. It keeps getting thrown back into his face and he doesn't even know what's really going on he can't hook everybody up at this point and Dennis throws in you know the well I know where I come from and I'm still doing that and look at you and you clearly forgetting where you come from so it's all this responsibility and all this stuff being placed on Bobby and I thought that was just a really good undertone for us to pay attention to in what also this episode was trying to teach and show us and they did a wonderful job with collectivizing that idea within seconds. And to put the cherry on the top, when Dennis walks away, we have the director that says, oh, this is a few more things to add to your wardrobe. We got the hat, and it's a top hat, yikes, and your gloves. <laughs> so just the entire outfit of what people used to wear while doing blackface. The penguin suit, the gloves. Yeah, and the hat, the top hat. Whew, completely culturally disconnected on how this may come off. And he's troubled. And he puts on the jacket and he's trying to make the jacket fly. He's like, mm, you know, puts on the gloves and the top hat. And he does the video. We then see the last act displayed on the screen, act five, never mind the bollocks. Now, bollocks are it has several different definitions, but it can mean testicles. It can mean your expression of defiance, your annoyed, or expression of contentment. We see Bobby, he has a little more uh, energy in his step. We see that he's in a very acoustic, uh, even-toned style studio with the rugs and the microphones and He's ready to record. He is amped up. And he's at the mic and he's testing it. Test, test. 
He's testing in his ear, in his in his headphones. He's like, yeah, he's loving it. He's feeling the energy. He's walking around, and he goes into the main uh, room with the soundboard and where the sound engineer is. And when he goes up to the sound uh, the sound bars, he notices that the levels are mid range, and he says, well, no, 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 we gotta turn all of these up. We gotta turn all of these levels up. And the white guy's just like, no, 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 we wanna have these, you know, down because if it's too loud, it has a it has has a very gritty distorted sound and so we want to keep these mid-level only this time Bobby goes over his hand and moves his hand out the way and says no we need to turn these all the way up because I want a gritty rough sound and if we have the levels up the music comes off with a lot of power and a lot of energy so we see that shift into I know what I'm doing Move the levels up. <laughs> so it's that moment like, yeah, Bobby, tell him. You know what to do. Come on, come on. <laughs> so in the room, we got Shy in there. We got the future inspector deck. We got Russell. We got Genius. We got everybody in the room. And they're like, man, this is really, really great. And Shy, you know, he's telling everybody, yeah, man, I was in the, in the, you know, in the video with Bobby. You know, if you blink, you would have missed me. But I was in the video and we had fun on the set. So that was fun. And Bobby's like, good. I'm glad you had fun and everything like that. And he's like, I'm loving this energy. And I love the energy of Pastor Bone. That was great. And they all like, yeah, that's good. And they're thinking they about to watch Bobby go in and do his thing to record. And he's just like, we need to, we need to be together. We need to be collective with this and I think we need to do that in group form you know and when we do this in group form we got to be strong and you got in there go in there and give it all you got I mean y'all competing against one another but that's good because you want to make sure your verse is better than that verse and we going against each other in a good way to make us strong and you want to make sure your verse is better than his so so it's good it's not anything negative let's just throw that out the out the window and you know we got Russell like I'm going on first you know and everybody like no 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 I'm going on first so Bobby's like that's cool it don't matter who going on first what matters is that you compete against each other in a good way and it's only going to be verses on this song that's good so if it ain't good it ain't going on the song so they like you know what it don't even matter you know russell you go in there and you kill it you, you you knock it out the box and bobby does that lean over the engineering soundboard like yeah like i know what i'm doing you know being a good producer a good producer or a good writer knows what's what he knows the strengths and the weaknesses. And if there are weaknesses, what do we need to do to make that better? It's the same thing with a writer. Babyface is a wonderful producer and, and writer. He can hear, does this song go to me? Does it go to Beyonce? Does it go to this person? Does it go? That's a good producer because as they're writing, as they're producing, they know these vocals would go better here. This would go better there. Babyface, hmm, do I want to sing Breathe Again? Breathe again, breathe again. No, 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 no. That sounds better with a Tony Braxton voice. That is a producer, people, okay? So Bobby is shifting into this producer and knowing what the mm, he doing. Before Russell can go in there, you know, he's going in the, in, the, in the recording area. He's got the headphones on. You know, he getting ready. He getting this little stance going on. And before they can get revved up, Dre comes into the room. He's like, Bobby, let me, let me, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Bobby like, hey, we about to do something. Like, I know it. It's going to be quick. Come here. So Dre pulls him to the side and he's like, yeah, man, um, I see that you're doing everything. And, you know, uh, I just got to tell you this, you know, the single is not doing as well as we, we, we thought it would do. And Bobby's like, well, you know, I said that that wasn't a good song to really come out with. You know, I really like these other songs and I can produce. So if you just let me produce, he was like, no, nah, the label, they, it's not moving. And sorry to tell you, but you been dropped from the label. And we got the power down. Do, do, do. And that's the end of the episode. Wonderful, 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 wonderful episode. I apologize for this video being lengthy. 
But if it's something that has a lot of detail, it needs to be explained and details need to be explained, I'm going to explain everything so the audience can understand craftsmanship and how wonderful this was directed and how wonder wonderfully this was written. It's showing the ups and downs of the record industry, how you're taking talent, you're jumbling it up, and you're spewing out what you think is best. And then you're disappointed on the outcome. You change how talented Bobby is, a, is as a producer. You're not listening to him when things are wrong. The record industry not caring about your development and your growth. The big difference between people that say, man, I love 90s music, or I love anything before this date, it's development. Motown, they would develop you. You would be signed two or three years until they believed that you were ready to not only go on stage by yourself, if there's a technical difficulty, you can bust a cappella, you can bust out a guitar, you can play the trumpet, you can kill a show. And nowadays, it's sell, 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 sell. And the people who are developed artists, the people that can do things on their own, they're put on the back burner a lot. Because for one, that's more money. You got to pay for a band. You know we got the sound got to be right. We can't go up with, with no bass. It's easier for them to put on a track and just let the track roll for three or four minutes and you sing or you rap or whatever the case may be, pop, you know, because um, it's easier. And we see now there is a huge dynamic difference between developed craft seasoned artists as people, you know, Harry and them doing stuff. Does it sell? It's going to sell. Yeah, it's going to sell because it's like a Pop-Tart. Yeah, a Pop-Tart is good, but ain't nothing like a good old meal with some green beans and steakums and a drink and a da-da-da-da-da. It's a Pop-Tart. It'll, 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 it'll curb your hunger. But ain't nothing like a home cooked meal. And that is why the music is so different then than it is now. Not saying there aren't artists that are in the mix of all of the, the, the stuff. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that it's showing you how labels can flip and dip and change things with artists. And it's not the same. And I said in the last review, I can only imagine how many artists were done the exact same way and we never got to hear their music and we never got to know their story because of the conniving ways of untouched, un, just, just a disconnected, cultural, different record labels. And if there were record labels that would bring in the heat with black culture, they were put on the back burner with a lot of stuff. That's why you see the evolutions of the Def Jams, the Motowns, the Love Face, the, because we had to see ourselves and we had to hear artists and we had to hear the real deals with people. And when we got that, and when you got that music, you could tell it was pure talent. Let me know what you think. I cannot wait to read the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, let me know. Let me know how you're feeling. Did you feel this energy in the episode? One of the key points that I've heard, uh, I said key points, <laughs> that was unintentional, it was that when they were getting ready to record, uh, Bobby gets the tape ready with his pen and he writes on the tape, Wu-Tang. So can we say Wu-Tang now? We watching the series. We can say Wu-Tang now. We can say this is the beginning phase for real, for real of Wu-Tang. And they say those comments, yeah, go in the booth and kill it and, 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 and just slaughter it like we the Wu-Tang Clan. They're like, yeah, Wu-Tang Clan. What's sad and hilarious at the same time, this label dropped Bobby before the explosion and I know they look back on that like, <laughs> beep. I know they look back at that like, dang, dang, dang. But if you would have went in with the belief and, and believing in the talent and trusting the talent in the first place instead of watering it down, y'all could have been, if the goal is money, on a jackpot. But you let it go right before the explosion. You, you, you broke it down right before Russell was about to go in there and do something crazy. So it's beauty in it. Outside of this series, I want you to look at how this applies in your life. 
You're going to have these ups and downs. There's no direct catapult to where you're trying to go. So you got all these knockdowns that Bobby is getting. But in that crescendo of that moment, well, now finally majority of the crew is on the same level of let's pursue this, let's do this. And you have another setback. So I'm loving that they're showing you the process and that we didn't just become Wu-Tang in two days. I hope you like the review and the recap. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and follow me on Instagram. Same profile name, officialbun underscore E. Bye.